Farazan! Oh, it's really you! Did you change your mind? All right, calm down. Let me be clear. I'm still not all that interested in Kasharawar. I'm just here to see how the project is going. After all, you are here as representatives of the Academia in this collaboration. The reputation of all research is at stake here, so I will not simply stand by should mistakes get made. <laughs> Either way, it's good that you were willing to come. Now, we've given Akara Crafts many ideas over the past couple of days. However, their owner thinks that our designs are too complicated, which will drive production costs too far up. That's expected. Students who have never had to deal with budgetary constraints probably don't understand how important it is to keep costs low. How enviable. Oh, uh, <clears throat> If you join the Kasharawar, your budget will be as big as you want it to be. I guarantee it. That's enough. I will not repeat myself. Take me to Akara Crafts owner first, if you please. <sighs> All right. He's usually at the slope up ahead recruiting volunteers to test out his toys. Let's just head over. Mamdu, the one I recommended is here. Oh, uh, so you're, uh, Madam Farazan? Yes, that's me. Ah, oh, wonderful. We haven't been able to make any progress on our collaboration recently. We've made many suggestions, but Miss Anis thought that those ideas were too simple and wouldn't be effective in training the mind. These early learning toys are meant to help the academia train future researchers, after all. If they're too simple, then how are they any different from regular toys? But if they're too complicated, not only will they be expensive to produce considering our production capabilities, but they won't have much broad appeal to Sumeru's children, either. So the design can't be too complicated, but it can't be too easy to play with, either. Hmm... I remember that in your notes, many contraptions have managed to fulfill complex functions despite using simple parts. Maybe we can do something similar with these early learning toys. The contraptions in my notes... I didn't create those. I simply took the contraptions in the ruins apart and analyzed them. But now that you mention it, the ruins did have things like that. Do you have a pen, paper, and scissors? I'll make a paper prototype. You have an idea already? I suppose I should have expected as much of a respected academia senior researcher. We do have those. Yes, please, help yourself. Oh, you're done already? Let me explain. These three thick lines represent three poles. These paper strips of varying lengths represent rings of different sizes. They can be slotted onto the poles and stacked up like a tower. Well, that is easier to make than I expected. So, how is this game played? That's very simple as well. You just need to shift the tower from this pole to another pole. Um, isn't this a little too simple? Uh, even by the standards of an early learning toy, I mean. Of course, when moving each ring, the paper strips in this case, you must follow one rule. You can only move one ring at a time, and you can't place a bigger ring on top of a smaller one. It's like building a tower. The rings in the three poles must be stacked from big to small. I name this toy, Pagoda Stack. Hmm, Pagoda Stack. That sounds way too simple. 
Even I feel like it's missing something. Give it a try and you'll find out if it's simple or not. I heard from Anis that you find volunteers to try out the toys, right? Why don't we do the same for this game? It's such a simple toy. Uh, there's no need to... Mandu, let's just do as she says. Uh huh. Uh, okay, then. And that's how you play this game. You can all give it a try. Let's see who's able to move the tower to another pole in the smallest number of steps. You called everyone here for such a simple toy? It doesn't look like it'll take that many steps. Come on, we all promised to help Mr. Mamdu test out the new toys. He said he'd give us new Genius Invocation TCG cards. Ugh, fine. Let's get this over and done with so we can head back and play cards. Done! It took me 19 steps. Huh? It took me over 20 steps. <laughs> I only needed 18 steps. Not bad. Looks like you're all familiar with the rules now. Then let's increase the difficulty. The next tower will be five layers tall. Now then, give it a shot. Wait, there's more? Well, since we're already here, why don't we just give it a try? An extra layer shouldn't make it that much harder, right? What's going on? I've already moved over 30 steps, but I'm still not done yet. <laughs> I'm almost done. Looks like I'm the faster one this time. Done! It took me 35 steps. What? How? This pagoda stack toy is pretty fun to play with. Good. We'll try it one final time. This time, we'll add two more layers, making seven layers in total. Mamdu, we've still got quite a few paper strips here. Why don't you give this a go as well? Do you need that many steps for something this simple? Let me try. Madam Faruzan, allow me to try it as well. You were looking at it quite seriously just now. Are you starting to understand the principles involved? I... think so. If you want to test out your hypothesis, you'll just have to play and find out. Got it. Ah, uh, we don't have enough paper strips left for you, Traveler. However, by the looks of things, you seem to have the game figured out. Why don't you guess what the lowest number of steps needed to solve a seven-layer pagoda stack is? What a shame. You were close. However, you did well for someone seeing pagoda stack for the first time. Let's see how well they do then. If I move this small ring... <sighs> then the big one won't be able to go on top of it. Well, this is going to take more steps than I expected. I... I've lost count of how many steps I've taken. Can I restart? This got a lot harder. Hmm. <gasps> I solved it! Madam Faruzan, it takes 127 steps in total. That many? But there are only seven layers! For every extra layer in the pagoda stack, the move order you need to consider becomes much more complex, and the number of steps required will at least double. More accurately, it will require double the steps, plus one each time. You did well. You didn't underestimate the principles behind it just because it's an early learning toy. The complexity of any given contraption isn't determined by the number of parts it has. The way the parts interact and the rules behind how it operates are important, too. Oh, I see. No wonder you emphasized in your notes that no contraption should ever be underestimated. I see. So even a simple toy can become complex with the right set of rules. That's right. The rules used for Bogota Stack are the simplest kind when it comes to ancient contraption-making techniques. 
I could spend some time picking out all those machines that do something similar and write you a reference book. Once that happens, you can give the volunteers the reference book and paper prototypes and find out which toy is the most popular. Do you have any other toys? Yeah! When can we play with them? Uh, in about two days or so, I think. Anis, if you're free, can you help me with the illustrations for the reference book? Of course! I'd be honored! Two days should be enough for us to find more volunteers. Then we can organize a huge conference here, at which we can announce which toy we'll be making. You'd be most welcome. We need more people to get a healthy range of opinions. The more, the merrier. Thank you for coming here with me today. I'll walk back with you. Is Madame Faruzan really going to mentor me? What an honor! Ah, I'm sure she'll say helping with illustrations isn't mentoring. So, uh, don't tell her I said that. No wonder she's so well respected at the Academia. When I first saw her, I thought she might be unreliable because she's so young. Uh, don't let her know I said that. Anis warned me about that before. We need to wait two whole days before we get the new toys. It might just be all reference stuff. It'll be a long time before we can play with the real toys. Guess all we can do is play Genius Invocation TCG in the meantime. I'll be going then. Say hi to Tainari and Kale for me if you can. Once everything here is settled, I'll make my way over to Pardis Di as quickly as I can. You want to ask why I'm unwilling to join them, yes? Putting aside the fact that they're too full of themselves, I actually have no issue with their research methodologies and approach. After all, knowledge is either right or wrong. Superiority and inferiority do not come into the conversation. All researchers are just doing their best to shed light on the unknown in their respective fields of expertise. No matter what corner of the unknown they shed light on, it's a step forward for us all. Because I believe wholeheartedly in that principle. Even if the others call my research useless, as long as the knowledge I gain from it is accurate, it could become useful in the future. In the end, useful and useless are concepts that shouldn't be used to evaluate knowledge. When I first started deciphering ancient documents, I didn't think about how it'd be useful to Kasharawar. That's why there's no need for me to join them to do useful research. I'd rather stay in Haravatat. It's much more convenient for me to access the materials I need for my research here. <sighs> Still, the funding that Kasharawar has offered me is so hard to get in Haravatat. Perhaps if this collaborative project goes smoothly, I can even ignore Haravatat and ask for a higher budget directly from the Academia. Oh, I could come up with lots of ideas. With Anissa's help, two days will be enough for our work. However, I'm still undecided as to the style of the reference book's text and illustrations. You're right. Explanations are a core part of early developments, too. By using detailed and accurate illustrations, we can impart knowledge more effectively. It would also make it easier for me to recruit students. Thank you. I'll take your opinion into account. See you in two days.
We got a new letter from an informant. Looks like the situation has changed again. Oh, you're here. We're just starting to set up the venue. We've called up everyone we possibly could have. This is going to be quite the event. <laughs> My masterpiece is going to be exhibited after all. Let's see what the Academia shall say about it this time. To sum up, the 24 forms of pressure-based puzzle mechanisms were used in various ruins. All right, let's go to the next page. Now, I'll explain the base layer design of elemental monuments. <sighs> Are we done yet? Oh, I'm falling asleep. I don't understand any of it at all. <sighs> Are these really toys? They sound a bit too dangerous to buy for children. Oh! Uh, well, we've prepared paper prototypes for everyone. If you're interested in the mechanisms Madame Farazan's talked about, you're more than welcome to try them out. Oh, this is no fun. Can I try another toy? I want to go home and play Genius Invocation TCG. <sighs> Forget it. I don't think anyone would be interested. I should go home and take care of my children. Hmm. Uh, how did this happen? Forget about getting opinions from others. No one even wanted to stay and try them out. I'm sorry. I think we miscalculated. No. You simply gave suggestions. I was the one who decided to follow through. Anise, too, was only following my instructions. I will find a way to make up for this error. Please, give me some time. I'll write another reference book. Excuse me, but are you the one who wrote this reference book? Uh, yes. Who are you? Ah, you're that man mountain who was in the crowd just now. <laughs> do I stand out that much? Well, I guess I don't look like someone who'd have anything to do with toys. Let me introduce myself. I'm Kamal, the branch master of Sumeru's Adventurer's Guild. What's the branch master doing here? Were you looking for us, or did something happen? I came to Port Ormos to visit some old friends. On the way over, I saw the booklet you were handing out, so I came to take a look. Can you print a few more copies of this booklet and sell them to the Adventurer's Guild? Also, could you make full-fledged models of those paper prototypes and sell them to us as well? What does the Adventurer's Guild want with these toys? You may see them as toys, but to adventurers who need to deal with all sorts of machines and contraptions within ancient ruins, this booklet is a true treasure. We have many members who can't read, so books are of little use to them. What they know of handling mechanisms has been learned solely through word of mouth. Even if the Academia granted public access to all their books, there are people who can't use them. Ah, and our booklet is practically all pictures. Well, it is designed for children. Hmm, it might be a bit too difficult for children, but it's perfect for adventurers. Also, uh, those paper strips, mm, you called them paper prototypes? If you can make wooden versions for demonstration purposes, even the most illiterate person would be able to follow along and understand. If we can supply a model set for each branch, and if each adventurer carries a booklet with them, then ruin exploration will become much safer. You really think so? <laughs> I mean, yes, yes, I always knew it. Knowledge will always be needed, one way or another. Making models of contraptions for the Adventurer's Guild? To be honest, that sounds like a good avenue to explore to me. Uh, we'll probably have to send in a separate application, but it shouldn't be an issue. 
After all, this concerns safety during the exploration of ruins. It's a problem that the Academia is actually trying to address as well. Then let's cut to the chase and discuss the details of our first order. <laughs> the amount we're offering to pay in advance is... this much. I'll be going then. Say hi to Tainari and Kale for me if you can. Once everything here is settled, I'll make my way over to Pardis Di as quickly as I can. Anise? We haven't had much time to get to know each other, but she seems like a good kid. She's able to calmly figure out the basic principles behind something without being influenced by others. I'll do my best to teach her over the next few days. Still, how much she learns will really depend on her. Well, her interest lies in the application of mechanisms. I do have some old knowledge to share, but if we think about the future, it's easier for her to learn the things she's interested in if she stays in Kasharawar. My research into mechanisms is, in a sense, a side effect of my research into ancient texts. If she becomes my student to learn how to make modern contraptions, it wouldn't benefit either of us in the long run. However, if she develops an interest in deciphering ancient texts over these next two days, that would change things. If I successfully poach a student, those young punks at Haravatot will have one less reason to cut my budget. Perhaps if this collaborative project goes smoothly, I can even ignore Haravatot and ask for a higher budget directly from the Academia. Oh, I could come up with lots of ideas. With Anissa's help, two days will be enough for our work. However... I'm still undecided as to the style of the reference book's text and illustrations. You're right. If no one understands the reference book, it doesn't matter how detailed it is. It's better to make it simpler and fun so that children will be interested in the subject. It'll also make it easier for me to recruit students in the long run. Thank you. I'll take your opinion into account. See you in two days. All right, maybe I'll take one more day off and knock out the rest of the work once I'm feeling up to it. Oh, you're here. We're just starting to set up the venue. We've called up everyone we possibly could have. This is going to be quite the event. <laughs> My masterpiece is going to be exhibited after all. Let's see what the Academia shall say about it this time. And if we activate this little mechanism just like that, a Sumeru Rose will appear at the top of the cane. <gasps> oh, I see. I thought it came out of thin air. It's amazing. If the mechanism was bigger, you could make a rabbit appear, right? Then you can't use a cane. Could you switch it out with a hat or something? You're applying what you learned creatively. Not bad. Let's look at the next page. If you fold an origami bird like this, it'll fly further and more stably. Whoa. You can make a mechanism using just a piece of paper? <laughs> the principles at play are even more important than the parts that make up a mechanism. 
These are pretty cool. I'm tempted to try them out. I'm not that interested in toys, but if they'll be beneficial for children's development... Everyone, we have paper prototypes and craft materials that you can use to make your own toys. Come try them out. This is such a well-prepared event. <laughs> I'll give it a go. But we want to play too. It's fine. We have a lot of paper prototypes and craft materials. All feedback is also welcomed. Oh! My origami bird flew further this time! Uh, Professor Farazan? How can I make mine fly further? Ahem. <clears throat> Just madam will do. Maybe in the future, you may indeed get the chance to call me Professor. You may wish to pay attention to these few details. Here, for example. All right. Try it again. Wow! It really did fly farther! Madam Farazan, will we learn origami at the Academia? Of course you will. If you become a researcher, you can explore any field you like to your heart's content. In the future, if you want, you can even become one of my students. But Mom and Dad said that there are six Darshans in the Academia. Wait, was it seven? Which Darshan teaches about mechanisms in origami? Well, uh, in this case, it wouldn't be Haravatat. I know. We need to choose Kisharawar. Huh? I want to attend Kisharawar in the future and fold even better origami birds. Uh, I want to make even more awesome mechanisms! Actually, the other Darshans do have their own specialties, too. For example, Haravatat specializes in... Pay attention, children! Children? How did this happen? What if we end up in a darshan we don't like? Does that mean that we won't get to learn about the things we do like? Hmm... <sighs> no, that won't happen. Take me, for example. I'm a researcher from Haravatat, but I research mechanisms, see? The only person able to restrict your curiosity as a researcher is you. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, not really. Huh. It's all right. You still have a long road ahead of you. Now, do you want to learn about some other machines? Let me tell you a story about pressure-based mechanisms and elemental monuments. Ad Astra Abith. Thank you for completing today's commissions. Here is your reward. <laughs> 